when we hear that music, it can only mean one thing. That's WROI, first federal show on Friday mornings here with Dick Belcher. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Going to be a great weekend. Yes, it will. The weather's going to be good. There's some patchy fog out there now, so if you're driving around, be careful. But I guess up north it's really bad. There's some school delays up there. Yeah, uh, August. you got to put in the fog delays. you got to schedule for that. Okay. Well, okay, uh, Loyal, we mentioned this last week. Loyal, the paint, they painted Bison, placed first at the State Fair. He did. Wasn't that wonderful? Yeah. Uh, United Way gets $3,000. Excellent. For Fulton County. Yeah. yeah. That is just fantastic. Yeah. And uh, they're traveling with him right now. I saw he was down at Caston High School this week. Did you? I did. How did they get him around? Uh, yeah, I think somebody with a big pickup truck. Okay. Uh, that's pretty. If, if you have a chance to look at it closely, there's a lot of things on there in reference to Fulton County. No, oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. We did a couple of uh, videos out there at the uh, over there in Disco when they were painting it. It was fun. It was just fabulous. The artists over there did a great job. Yeah. Okay. Well, the bison is uh, soon be going out to pasture, right? Yeah, I think they're going to play with the, him around. Though you go find him in various places and. Yeah. They're going to keep him for a little while. He's, a, he's an award winner, Dick. Okay. And when we really finish with him, what, what Shirley Willard going to take him? And I don't know. I still want my chance to ride him. Hmm. That Silence. Won't, that won't work. Crickets. Yeah. Well, Donald and Hillary are still uh, uh, sparring back and forth. It's getting ugly. Well, it'll get more ugly as the uh, weeks go by here. We've got a 150 days or something like that to, before the election. 151 until we start the campaign for the next presidential election. Okay. They may start early this year. I bet you we'll see some political ads for the next president prior to the election. <laughs> and who will be doing that? I'm nominating you and Lever Larry Evans as your vice president. Maybe Tom Bear. If you're listening down there in Florida, Tom, start shaking hands. <laughs> A little more comfortable okay. this week, can you tell? Well, uh, no, I'd have to support Larry Evans, I think. I think so. Yeah, he's a great guy. He does a good job cutting hair. He does. Mm -hmm. If you can do that for as long as he's done it, by gosh, you could run a country. <laughs> okay. Well, we had a, a little excitement down in Kokomo uh, this uh, couple days ago when the tornado hit hit uh, Kokomo and we have with us this morning Andy Perkins who was uh, right in the midst of that. Uh, Andy, tell us about that experience in Kokomo. Sure, I was uh, I was actually in the Starbucks that afternoon and uh, picked up a cup of coffee and not long after I sat down the manager uh, walked around and said hey this uh, tornado warning is a real thing we have to get everyone into the to the bathrooms and uh, we were in the bathrooms for uh, a, a little while, and I think everyone thought for the first 10 minutes or so that it would just blow over. And then we heard some uh, 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 rumblings, what sounded to me like a large appliance falling over in a food prep area behind us, and, and uh, people kind of went from standing to, to kneeling very quickly and covering their heads, and, and then in about another 60 seconds or so, it was, it was over. Uh, the uh, part of the roof we knew had had to have torn open because the uh, uh, the light in the fixture in the restroom was gone and and uh, uh, some rain was starting to fall through and and then it took them about another ten minutes to to get the hinges off the door and, and get us out um, but we were all you know, very thankful to the Lord for keeping us safe through that I. Uh, I saw a video that had been posted on, on Facebook and other places, it looked like it was shot from the Chili's, uh, and it was very dramatic, and my first reaction was, you know, that guy had a lot better angle on it than I did. Uh, I, I think uh, we really expected to step out, and, and my first thought was, I'm, I'm glad none of us were in the Starbucks, because there's probably some broken glass out there or something. And we got outside and turned around, and there was a broken Starbucks. Uh, and so. I think that uh, uh, it just is a reminder that you uh, have to be thankful for every day because you know you you, you never know what's around the corner and uh, so uh, we're very uh, uh, very thankful and appreciative uh, that we were protected by the Lord. 
Okay, now you said the manager came around and, and uh, herded you into the uh, bathrooms. Where did he get his information? I, I assume he was in contact with the uh, with the owner, uh, uh, and he and he knew the policies uh, very well, and he wasn't in a panic, and and uh, had a couple of other employees obviously there with him, and they uh, they're to be commended. They handled the situation very well. Okay, uh, how many people were in the store? I'm, I'm going to estimate about twenty. Okay, about twenty. So what went through your mind uh, when uh, you're in the bathroom there on your knees? Well, uh, it, it, the first 10 minutes, uh, not much. It was just, I was just kind of impatient. Okay, you know, let's, let's storm pass and we're going to walk out. And then... Yeah, 99% of them are false yeah, alarms. That's right. Go on. That's right. And, and then for, for about a minute or so, I, uh, the thoughts did go through my head about, uh, you know, this, this could be my time. This could really happen. And uh, I think it's... It's a blessing in that situation with a tornado in particular that by the time you, the, the surreality of it is, is really passing into acceptance, it's over. You know, it's just, just that quick. So, so while there was time to be in, in some fear and, uh, uh, and some contemplation, uh, that time didn't last very long. We're speaking this morning to Andy Perkins, local attorney uh, that uh, survived the tornado in, in Starbucks. Uh, now, do your partners know you were in there drinking coffee and go goofing off? That's right, that's yeah. right. Drinking coffee and goofing off is, is when I was doing that. But, uh, absolutely, absolutely, I had to share. That's the, that's the drawback of it. <laughs> okay, well, that's great uh, that uh, you survived. And uh, there's uh, the city of Kokomo, there were no fatalities, uh, according to the news. And a few injuries, but very little, and uh, it was primarily because they were pretty well prepared and people taking cover. And so, and it also is talked in the Indianapolis Star this morning about how much more difficult it is to identify a tornado in August versus April or May or March. Interesting. It's just uh, meteorology. From the meteorology standpoint, I'm not sure why that is. Is that that humidity, you think? Well, we can say that. We can say that. That sounds like a good answer. Yeah. It's not the heat, it's the humidity. <laughs> is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what my mom told me. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to share about that? No, I just, uh, I, I, I took away from the experience kind of a, a good reminder that uh, uh, God is sovereign and in control of all things, and, and we need to be thankful for every day. Yeah, make every day the best day. Absolutely. Live it up because tomorrow's you don't know well. Thanks for stopping by this morning, Andy, and Thank sharing, sharing with us. I Thanks, appreciate, Dave. appreciate that. Okay, now you ready for a little trivia? As always. Okay, today is August 26th, and it's a national holiday, which is a National President's Joke Day, National <laughs> Senior Citizens Day, or National Dog Day. I'm going to ponder that for a little while. You're okay. going to give us the answer and at the end, right? <laughs> I know. You do? I already know. Oh, yes. you're smart. I just, know. Just, just don't give it away. Here, I won't. We I want, won't. We want the people out there to be really thinking about okay. this. Okay. Okay. Uh, this weekend, uh, we, or this week coming, we've got a lot of things happening. Faith Outreach Center, 1125 East 9th Street serves barbecue chicken, 11 to six today and tomorrow to raise money for the Guatemala uh, mission trip. A pancake and sausage biscuit and gravy breakfast is tomorrow from 7 to 10 at the Fulton County Historical Museum. Breakfast is sponsored by the Fulton County Historical Society and the Girl Scout Troop 43611. Fulton County United Way Day of Caring is uh, next Friday, September the 2nd. This is a one-day service project to assist elderly and the financially disadvantaged residents of Fulton County with home and yard repair and maintenance. A good thing they do here. They uh, kicked that off a couple of years ago. That's right. Yeah, it's a it's a good service, and I'm sure it'll. I'm sure they got a lot of work lined up for that day. Another series of American Sign Language classes will be held free of charge at the Fulton County Public Library. Classes meet at 6.30 p. 
p.m. each Thursday for six weeks starting on September the 8th. A nine-piece orchestra will perform 5.30 to 9.30 September the 2nd at Lake Bruce. Now wait a minute, we got nine-piece orchestra at Lake Bruce. Hmm. Mm. Stepping it up a little yeah, bit on that, that's great. Shades, classy. <laughs> shades, shades of the Colonial Hotel. I like it. 40 I like it bringing culture. Okay. Fulton County. <clears throat> Everyone is invited to, uh, to bring a picnic dinner, uh, blanket and chairs, and enjoy an evening. There's no cost to attend. It's at the Hoosier Hideaway at Lake Bruce. What was the date on that again, Dick? Uh, that is uh, September the 2nd. Excellent. Thank you for Next that. Weekend. Next weekend. Next week. Yeah. Akron Area Arts League is uh, organizing a carpool to Indianapolis to view the 92nd Annual Hoosier Salon exhibit at the Indiana Historical Museum September the 17th to register call 598-2875 or email is uh, available for that also. First Christian Church 1101 Madison Street invites the community to an ice cream social at 7 p.m. Sunday. There will be pie, ice cream, Sundays, and calories available. Lots of them. Lots of calories. Okay. <laughs> and games and prizes. Okay, the Kiwana United Methodist Church hosts a community picnic from 4 to 7 Sunday at the Union Township Park Pavilion at the corner of Troutman and Phillips Street in uh, Kiwana. You have lots of things going on there. Fulton County Chamber of Commerce <coughs> members and our associates may attend a business after hours 4.30 to 6.30 on September the 1st at Super 8. Super 8's done a remodeling job down there. Done a great job down there. <clears throat> New carpeting and paint. And We've got a lot of those after hours things coming up. Amy Rose really uh, getting her feet underneath of her and scheduling quite a few of those. So great work on her part and everybody at the chamber. Okay, CASA, <clears throat> Fulton County and Tidewater Executive Tax Service are recipients of funding from the Rochester Downtown Partnership facade grant program. CASA will install a new sign and Tidewater will undertake a second floor awning project. <clears throat> Downtown, we're trying to make it better. Yeah, they got their first awning up already. It looks great uh, there at Tidewater. Uh, can't wait to see what's going to happen from all yeah. these uh, efforts happening with our downtown mm -hmm. folks. It's going to be pretty. So what do you think of the new brick wall? Love it. So do I. I think that is classy. That is going to be very classy. Once that's up and running, uh, I mean, with the park and everything mm -hmm. next year, just looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Going to have some great events there, and it'll be a great way to uh, represent ourselves as folks roll into Rochester. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people that worked on that. Uh, Terry Lee, Dave Carr, the mayor, and others, and uh, making the things happen. But uh, the, the project now is uh, kind of wait and see as to what the design might be for the for the uh, landscaping and uh, what will go in the lower part. Also, how much money is it going to cost and where, where is the money going to come That's from? always the big question, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But I did, you know, we did do a thing, uh, Bob Peterson, with the uh, iron fence from the uh, old county home. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so looking forward to seeing what that yeah. looks like all cleaned up and put around oh, there. it'll be beautiful. I think so. It'll be beautiful. Uh, the Rochester Kiwanis Club. Uh, has sponsor night at the Dairy Queen next Tuesday. Ten percent of the gross go to the Kiwanis Club. So, Dairy yeah. Queen's been doing that a uh, few years now. I'll tell you what. Over at RTC, we get the flyers all the time, yeah. um, announcing the events, and uh, it's just a wonderful thing. A, a great way to support the community, and you get ice cream. That's a win-win in my boat. Can't beat it. Just can't beat no, it. <laughs> Well, but if you work down there, you got to pay for the ice cream. There's no free lunch. You know? no. Yeah, I'll work for ice cream. Okay. Well, our condolences to the Maxine Barris family. She passed away yesterday, longtime teacher at Rochester High School and a great individual. Okay, some flowers. Brenda Yoakum was one of uh, 14 in 2016 outstanding specialist award winners in Indiana for her work. She was also one of uh, 145 national, nationwide to win this uh, uh, award. Uh, 
<clears throat> she's worked for JAG for some, some time, and that, that uh, uh, is a work, a work one youth services of Fulton County and Marshall County and Kosciuszko County. Brenda is the daughter of Kathy and the late Ron Christman, and uh, been, went to high school here in North Manchester and has worked a long time with that. Also, Flowers to Malinga, uh, <clears throat> Melinda Klinger, director of the Fulton County Historical Society. She's the reception, recipient of the Fulton County Chamber of Commerce Second Quarter Shining Star Award. Yeah, she got that for the gathering of the orange she put together for the power show this year. Uh, great job out there, and, and I was just out speaking with her yesterday. They're they're always on the go out there oh, at the Fulton they County work Historical so Society. Hard. I mean, in so many activities out there, Melinda is a real go getter, and so well deserved, I'm sure. Jane Muir also gave uh, Brady Young and uh, Plush Beauty Lounge at four. 32 Main Street, the second quarter double I award. Congratulations to them. Continue the great work. Okay, you ready for some money news? Always. Okay. Dow was off 42 yesterday, closed at 18,446. Uh, Yellen is speaking today at Jackson Hole. All eyes and ears are on her today. Are we expecting a big announcement of some sort? Uh, they want to watch her body language when she talks about <laughs> when she's going to raise interest rates. Okay. So we'll see what happens. Sears recorded another bleak quarter. They lost three dollars and seventy cents a share last Struggling. quarter. Struggling. That's a lot of money. <laughs> Compared with the year before, they made two hundred eight million that on the quarter before uh, a year ago. Uh, <clears throat> so they're on a slippery, slippery slope. Slippery slope. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, at First Federal today, we're open till 5, tomorrow 8.30 to noon. ATM is always open. Today is Blue Jean Day at First Federal for our Charity of the Month. We have a Charity of the Month, and we had Compassion and Healthcare on last week. Gave them $1,000 uh, towards their cause. And uh, you now those that contribute at the bank, and most everybody does uh, today, have their opportunity to wear blue jeans. And so, uh, if you come in and see blue jeans uh, on bankers, well, uh, that's okay. <laughs> it's allowed today. <laughs> it's allowed. Yeah. Interest rates on home loans remain very low, so there is still an opportunity to refinance your home and save some money. For a loan analysis, uh, make an appointment to talk with John Schaefer, Ben Dalton, and our Rochester office, or Bill Morris in Winnemac. We service our loans locally. If you're looking for a local bank, stop in and see us. We've got uh, lots of services that are available. And I think we're the only locally owned bank left in town, uh, along with several credit unions. Uh, First Federal is FDIC insured and an equal housing lender, and our NMLS number is 3999-27. That makes us legal. Oh, yeah. Uh, get that out of the road. <laughs> Gloria Carvey, we're welcome. We're glad oh, to have thank you. Thank you. Here. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Gloria is uh, the uh, head person of Rochester, <laughs> site, Rochester yes. site director yes. of Ivy Tech. Is that correct? Yes, yes. And, and you're also wear a lot of other hats. I'm at the chamber, I'm president of their board. Um, let's see, at Lake Manitou Association, mm -hmm. Kiwanis, uh, yeah, a lot of different uh, uh, organizations and uh, always uh, trying hard to get all the good words out about what all they do. And uh, today, uh, talking about the chair fair. Okay, tell me about the chair fair. What is the that? The chair fair is. Um, um, actually a Tri Kappa event um, and it's for Fulton County scholarships. They hold this um, affair, the chair affair or chair fair every two years and this is the year. It's going to be coming up September 10th. It's going to be at uh, Schnabel Tier. The first time we've been out been there it's going to be under the tent 
Okay. And uh, we're going to have um, at five o'clock, five to six o'clock, we're having hors d'oeuvres. Those little horses do vers. <laughs> and uh, we're going to have uh, wine tasting. Uh, that's part of your ticket price and uh, cheese. And then at 6 o'clock, we're going to have our auction and our entertainment. What are you going to auction? Uh, we're auctioning chairs. These are chairs that are beautifully decorated. Okay. And uh, what they are, uh, the membership and also some of the local artists have been out there painting these chairs up. And um, the fact they're starting to come in, there's some, they're really pretty. There's about 30 of these chairs. Uh, all told and uh, they will be auctioned off and uh, we will have a rowdy affair with our wine cheese and buying chairs <laughs> and, uh, not too rowdy with <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes uh, <laughs> and the good news where Ivy Tech comes in is that uh, it is uh, co-sponsored this event with the Ivy Tech Foundation so we are raising scholarship funds for um, Ivy Tech students, Fulton County Ivy Tech students, um, so that they can go to Ivy Tech and any of the any of our campuses. Uh, just they have to be from Fulton County. We're also going to be honoring some of the folks who have endowed some scholarships this year. We have uh, really been out there in the community. Um, and we're going to make some announcements of some um, the largest amount of money that we have ever raised for Fulton County uh, students. So that's going to be exciting. Okay, now tell us two years ago about the auction. You were telling me yes. what, what the uh, the top going chair went for oh yes we had we had some wonderful chairs and many many of them you know bring a hundred dollars a piece but but our top selling chair brought six hundred and forty dollars there were two determined ladies that were bidding and bidding <laughs> and we love bidding wars bidding wars <laughs> it went sky high and uh, it was a telephone chair I don't know if you remember such things, um, but a telephone chair was something that was in the 1950s and 60s that would have a chair and then an arm that would go around and would sit in the hallway and you would place your telephone on it. Mm -hmm. And I think what the ladies were going to use that telephone chair was for a nail uh, stand to do their nails oh. and, uh, and put it in their, their hallway. And uh, and do that, but it was it was a lively, lively option. Also, could be served, say, uh, maybe serve as a TV tray or something. Yes. Like that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They could they could do that too. Women and, thinking uh, of the nails, men thinking of food. Food. Yeah, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> and, well, that's uh, wonderful, Gloria. And uh, so, anyway, they raised about eight thousand uh, dollars last year. Uh, the Tri Kappa presented a check um, for five thousand dollars to Ivy Tech, and then the other monies uh, were used for their scholarships that uh, they promote in the high school. So we're going to be doing that again, and uh, I, I'd like you all to come out to Schnabeltier on September tenth, um, and uh, at five o'clock you uh, can get tickets beforehand. They are twenty dollars a piece. Um, and or you can you can even come out there and we will you know have, have tickets, tickets day of day of where do we get them prior to uh, prior to uh, you need to uh, contact uh, my daughter who's kind of heading up this Stacy uh, right Stacy my Stacy is heading this up and uh, at two two three six six two nine give her a call she'll get your ticket to you and uh, but you as I said you can come out there that that day uh, Sally's going to be out there you okay. know Sally she's going to be our auctioneer and uh, auctioning off of the chairs and Will we'll she have, have the music. twins with her I bet okay. I bet she has they're so cute <laughs> of course, we're talking about Catherine Evans there uh, Brent Evans lovely wife she's an auctioneer she was on TV for that not that long ago with that MSNBC show 
just had her twins. Congratulations to the, to her. Hopefully we do get to see them out of Schnabel here for that. That'll be fun. Yes, I'm sure they'll be out there cheering mom on because the two years ago, uh, she bought the cutest little child's chair. And uh, so now having three, I'm sure they're using that chair a lot. Yeah. Well, she'll probably <laughs> buy two more. Well, she does. She yeah. needs to buy a pair of them. <laughs> That's great. That's great. All right. Uh, now you're connected with Ivy Tech, and I know Ivy Tech uh, uh, had some issues with the tornado. Bring us up to date uh, okay. the, for those yes, people yes. that might be understood. Um, you know, um, poor Kokomo, they really did get, get hit. And, and at the time, um, I was down in Logansport at a meeting, and I was with a meeting with uh, some of the, the president, the, the um, um, communications director, and we got a call. Um, at that time and said there is tornado warnings in Howard County and, and this looks pretty bad. Everybody shot into action. Um, the meeting came to a screeching halt and um, there was uh, announcements went out and um, I'd like to say that um, our campuses, we have four buildings down in, Logan, in Kokomo that uh, they all were secured immediately and the students put into the hallways. But our Furman Street building, which is on, um, it's, it's more to the south off of 31, its roof was hit. And uh, so we are still struggling with that. There are no classes. There have been no classes since Wednesday. Um, the campus, our main campus on Morgan Street is open. Um, I would like to direct our students to stay connected with Campus Connect, which is their portal, and uh, about classes on Monday because if they're in our, our building on Furman Street, it, it was pretty damaged. Good. Well, fortunately, nobody was, uh, no fatalities, very no. few injuries in the Kokomo situation there, and that's, that's a great news for everybody and shows preparedness. Yes, I think I think that is so admirable, and I, I I'm so glad Andy's with us. <laughs> and, uh, you know uh, that it really does. I mean, because if they would not have gathered in that that restroom, if they'd been sitting out there with all the glass that's in that building, uh, can you imagine how yeah. bad that? A lot of been? people did the right thing, and preparedness was exactly right. Uh, they were ready for it, and they did the right thing. Mm -hmm. Gloria, thank you for stopping by. Don't thank forget you. the chair fair, is September the tenth at uh, five o'clock in the evening uh, at the wine and cheese place and uh, uh, and bring your bill for yes or, or come, come come to buy chairs and and, is, and this is going to be fast I mean I, I feel it's probably five to seven you know um, because we'll have our, our hors d'oeuvres and then we'll go out and buy our chairs okay very good thank you for stopping by our trivia this morning was Today is August the 26th, is a national holiday, is it National Presidential Joke Day, or National Senior Citizens Day, or Na National Dog Day? I'm going to go with National Dog Day. How about you, Gloria? Yeah. Same? Yep, that's it, that's how did, how it. Did, how did you know that? Well, I was I was watching the news real early, uh, and they had this dog <laughs> that came on and was barking, and they said, congratulations, it's your day. <laughs> It is, and uh, so, <clears throat> and there's a little thing in the USA Today that says 65% of dog owners saying having a pet dog motivates them to exercise more. Yes, Ooh. walk more, I need that. It okay. makes you healthy to own a dog. Okay, yeah. let's close with this statement by Floyd Dell. Dell, he was an American writer. He passed away in 1969. He says this, Idleness is not doing nothing. Idleness is being free to do anything. <laughs> is your cup half full or half empty? Exactly. Optimist or pessimist? Well, thank you, Dick Belcher, Glory Carvey, Andy Perkins. Glad to have you here with us this morning. WROI, your news is next.